My name is Valentina V and this is Clifton Stommel. We're here on the hottest day in the summer in Clifton's garage. Nice and toasty. I'm wearing all black because you are shooting a short. Before we intro that, let's tell the people who you are. What do you do? I'm a director of photography uh, living in Los Angeles and been out here for about six years doing that. And the non-union level, working my way into the union. Six years yeah. he's been here, six years. Look at how much stuff he's accumulated in six years. Look at this stuff. Swing around over here. Look at this stuff. You have worse gear acquisition syndrome than I do. Oh, it's so bad. It's and so bad. That's a compliment. <laughs> yeah. That's a compliment. Do you think it's important to have like a certain amount of gear on hand when you are an indie filmmaker as opposed to like constantly renting things? Uh, we basically have a full production package here. When my wife and I first came out here with basically a DSLR, a boom mic, and an LED, we were like, we want to make sure that when we want to shoot our own stuff, yeah. we have bare minimally what we need to just what, pick up what our What DSLR camera was it? It was a 5D Mark III with Magic Lantern shooting raw. That's right. <laughs> Basically, since then, it's just grown uh, more than anything. Every time that we do a shoot, every pain point or every opportunity to, to you know, ease the friction or make the workflow go smoother, that's what I invest in. So yeah. that when we want to shoot our own projects, again, we're just ready to grab stuff off the shelf and get rolling right away. The stuff that I end up investing in, honestly, is grip. Grip mm -hmm. and lighting. Because cameras always change, camera technology always changes, you can get newer and newer stuff, but mm -hmm. lighting's gonna be the thing that lasts. Yes. All yeah. you need is a garage, mm -hmm. a bunch of gear, and some friends. Just a garage, a bunch of gear, and some friends. Yeah. So today we're shooting a short film in which a man who is cleaning out his garage and breaking down boxes discovers a very odd prototype of some liminal space technology that is a storage box with an even larger seemingly infinite space inside. It is a prototype, so it doesn't function quite like it would. Careful there, you'll fall all the way in. And he does, in fact, fall all the way in. Uh, and by the end of it, we get to see a wonderful moment of the box collapsing and the impending doom. Do you usually put storyboards on your door like this? Is this the go-to method? This is the go-to method. When it comes to our shorts, yeah. Um, sometimes the client will provide storyboards or they'll just have a, you know, rush together shot list and be like, just come out here in the morning and there isn't time. But when it comes to our own stuff, storyboarding obviously makes an ambitious day like today a greater possibility of getting everything we want. So taking the time to do this in pre-production is massive. See the edits, see how it's all gonna flow, just yeah. knowing shot by shot by shot how the whole thing's gonna flow. Do you cross them flow. out when you're done I with do. it? I do, yeah. That's so satisfying. It is so satisfying, yeah. I love that. So we have some lights here. How are yes. we planning to use these guys right here? So these guys, the MT Pro, these have this wonderful pixel chase effect. So this is actually gonna be our lighting gag so that when we see the box from the outside, but okay. when the light is in here and you can't see the light, ideally, then you'll see the effect, and I'll show you, so you can see is what I'm talking about, right? Through the little crack there. Oh, that's yeah. why it's not a real box. That's why it's not a real box. And then when we see into the box from the from the inside, from the outside, we'll see the same lighted effect. Oh, so, this is like showing off the surreal aspect of it, exactly. the magic. Yeah. The MT Pro has, I believe, 36 pixels. A ton of pixels. So you yeah. can do whatever different combinations of pixels, chase sequences, whatever you want on it. Yeah. It's basically 36 different lights in one, yeah. in a way. Which is, which is, when you see an effect like this, is what makes that really look like yeah. it's moving smoothly. It's actually sliding without gaps. It's those, true, those yeah. It jumps. doesn't have those stutters yeah. that a lot of lights with pixels do. It's very cool to be able to have something like this where you can sort of set this up around or within a miniature set or with a product lighted environment and being able to actually turn this from moving to even stopping at a specific spot. Oh, yeah. So to be able to actually take these lights, have them set up, and then move the light within the actual product, super valuable. Like if you want a small light, you can have a small light. Yes, yeah, exactly that. Yeah, because a lot of times also, maybe you don't want as much light because mm -hmm. you're trying to match a practical yeah. or what have you. And even at you know 1% on this, it's still too bright. So right. then you just take it down to a pixel. It's like 5% of what this thing can do, and it's already so much more than what I even thought I needed, but now it's giving me a bunch of ideas for where to go from here. So I have yeah. more short films I have planned for these little lights. All right, well, I wanna see how you accomplish this because this is a small garage that is mostly filled with film equipment. Yes. And it will transform through the magic of cinema. Mm -hmm. So let's get to it. You okay, ready? Let's get to it, I'm ready. Cut. 
So hot tip, I heard him saying the word sourcey. It means it looks lit. It looks artificially lit, right? Like right now, this is quite sourcey because there's a light about three feet from my face. So a lot of times in film, we want to make it seem like the light is natural, that the light exists in the environment. We either diffuse it, we move it further away, uh, we bend it in a certain way, we add more light in the background, anything to make it look less purposeful. My favorite way of making it look less sourcey is probably doing a book light. That is not when you simply diffuse, it's when you bounce it and then diffuse what you've bounced. So we're here today with JC, the gaffer on our wonderful little short film, and he has Citus Link and this wonderful little bridge tool for us. Yeah, so we're working with the bridge today. The awesome thing about this is it just makes your Bluetooth connection stronger. So I've worked in settings where I've had like 12 lights rigged up to the ceiling and a stage, and um, it just keeps everything connected so you have no issues with the app. So that when we're messing around and doing the light cues, we could just turn them on whenever they need to be gone and turn them off when they need to be off. The cool thing about this light is that for something like sci-fi, throwing this on the wall, putting it inside of like, let's say you have a console with a bunch of buttons, whatever it is you want to do, but just creating a little bit more of that push for like realism in a science fiction world. So I'm really excited to use this. So let's see how it looks on camera. It's a lot of recycling. Do you think it'll fit in the bin? Don't know yet. Okay, well, if you need anything, uh, I'm just over the fence. Just give me a shout. Won't. Oh! That was so cool. Thank you so much for having me and showing me your magic. Yeah, thanks for coming out. It's really great to have you on set. I can't wait to see the full short. Mm -hmm. Where is it going to be? The full short will live on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Clifton Stommel, as well as on the Stommel House Vimeo page. So if you want to see that full thing, go on over there. If someone's trying to be a professional cinematographer, have their own studio, what's some advice that you can give? Like some real advice. It's worth having everything. Even if you're just acquiring mm. just whatever you can afford just to get rolling. Camera, a lens, sound, shoot through a plastic cup if you need to, some lights. If you have the means of production, even at just a base level, then you aren't reliant on anyone else's time or anyone, any uh, rental shops or budgets to just shoot what you want to shoot. So you can just, again, call up some friends and say, hey, we have an afternoon in the garage. Who wants to shoot a little piece together? Honestly, he had audio equipment in his garage. He had all sorts of things that normally like DPs won't have. If you liked this video and everything we're doing on this channel, then be sure to like this video and also leave us a comment because we're always in the comments answering your questions. What's it like to be in the industry? Any questions for Clifton? Like we are happy to answer that. So go ahead and leave those in the comments. As always, it's been a pleasure and uh, it was so nice to meet you. It was good to meet you as well. Thank you so much. And thank you guys. Maybe What's we have his one. name? Uh, his name is Harold, which is long for Harry. Harold. For obvious reasons. Harold. This guy is my stand-in, 